Generation STEM is brought to you thanks to the help from the National Science Foundation and its collaborative association with the Center for Games and Impact, VEME, Eline Media, Haku, and Arizona State University. Today in Generation STEM, we'll meet a young student who proudly tells us that he will be the first one in his family to get a college degree. An electrical engineer studies the enigmas of light and he works with particles as if he were a science juggler. We go to Arizona State University to meet a teacher who applies math to biological processes. It's called Cafe College and it's a paradise for students. There is no question without an answer. Join us on this new episode of our series, Generation STEM. Hello, welcome to Generation STEM. My name is Gabriel Salgado. Today we will take a trip around some STEM careers or those in science, technology, engineering, and math. We start with Brian Sarate, a high school student who came from Mexico by himself and who now is getting ready to go to college to be a dentist, one of the most profitable careers with a very low unemployment rate. Brian goes to a school in San Antonio, Texas that specializes in STEM. Let's hear what he has to say about his experience and what he has learned. My name is Brian Zarate, and I go to STEM Early College High School, and I want to study dentistry. My grandpa was a dentist in Mexico, and he was my inspiration, the one who put me on the path to dentistry. Think about it like a store. If you walk into a store and it's disorganized and a mess. The classes help us a lot to understand the the things we're gonna see in the future. We get to learn science, biology, chemistry, every subject, everything we need to know for our careers, for our future. My parents decided to come to the United States, but I, I came here alone on my own. So I spent a year here without my mom, without my dad, just with my cousin and my grandma. It was really difficult. I didn't know any English. And now to be taking college level classes at a university level five years later, it's a lot, it's a lot of progress. I'm the first one that will graduate from college. My mom graduated from high school and uh, so did my dad. My middle school counselor told me, oh, well, there's this new program. It starts in like a year and I would like I would like to tell you about it. And so I said, yeah, okay, let's uh, try it out. Well, that's what impressed me was that there were a lot of group projects together. Everyone put in hours and hours working on just one project. They're all dedicated, not just me, but my classmates as well. We make uh, robots that can go underwater and uh, we make robots that are really big and can calculate equations that are too complicated for a normal robot. And not just that, they work and they win competitions. I made and I built, I made the cables and parts and cut up the parts and I used a lot of the tools. No, and if it doesn't work, you just have to do it all over again. It has to be built and then you do it again. We only have about six weeks, which is predominantly what an engineer has also to make something new. Ms. Chavez is the counselor and she, I don't know what we would do without her. She's amazing. She gives us information. She gives us a lot of information and a lot of support and a lot of help. I feel good that I'm able to help them out 
um, as well as getting them prepared for the real world. I've been asking my counselor if there are any scholarships or anything like that, but uh, I want to know about that stuff because my time is coming to an end here in high school and I'm gonna have to start another chapter in my life, which is college. There's this new program that it's called It's Time to Bind, and it's uh, where Ivy League colleges like Harvard, Princeton, Yale, and all these other schools that have a lot of prestige in the United States. They offer a program, and it's offered to the, uh, offered to the top 20 students in the STEM program here. They help me to impress them, basically, and they say, oh, if this person did it, then he wanted to come here, and then he wants to go to school. He shows us that, that he will work, and that he wants to study, that he will build a future. And then they could say, well, no one else can have him. I want to show my, my, my siblings and my sister and my brother that they can do what I did too. And I want to show them that they can do even more than what I'm doing here right now if they choose to. A dentist can have his or her own clinic or office, can work for a private center, or for the state, working in the public health sector. At school, Brian knew the value of teamwork, planning, and how to solve problems, which are very important skills to develop in our education nowadays. Don't forget to visit our website where you can find a lot of information, such as support to choose a STEM career or the steps to follow on how to go to college. The challenge of making a video game opened the doors for him towards science, and today he is an engineer devoted to unveiling the mysteries of light. Can you imagine studying particles of light that one day may affect the way we do our work? Alejandro Rodriguez is a young electrical engineer of Chinese Cuban origin. He works in research, studying very small particles of light that according to him, in the next few years could become the energy source for computers and will be thousands of times faster than the ones we know right now. Let's see what he can tell us about his work and how he got interested in research. Well, my name is Alejandro Rodriguez Wong. Uh, Rodriguez comes from the Cuban side of my family. I was born in Cuba and Wong is from the Chinese side of my family. My grandpa was Chinese and he immigrated to Cuba in the 1940s. I came here when I was 12 and moved to Miami where I went to middle school. I started high school in ninth grade. Honestly, I rejected science at the beginning. Actually, I was more interested in learning English, in uh, learning the culture. And since the social interaction I experienced in Cuba was so different, well, uh, it took a long time for me to adapt. When I started the 10th grade, um, I remember that I took a class on computational science and data. And, uh, and I started programming and I realized that I could make my own video game, um, uh, my video game. And as a kid, I always liked to play with those video games. Um, then I finished writing a program. It was a very simple game and uh, I started to sell it in school. From there, a lot of questions about science and math popped up and I uh, realized that the only way that um, I can make an impact in the world of computational science was if I learned mathematical science. I'm now at Princeton University. I'm a professor in the Department of Electrical Engineering, where in my everyday life, I spend my time doing research. I have a group of students that I teach, but they don't only just learn um, one subject, they are doing research and they're expanding their knowledge in research topics. And what we try to do here is to manipulate and control light. Um, in thinking of applications, um, industrial, industrial and also academic, that have to do with nano optics. Nano optics is the study of light on a scale that's very, very small. If you can imagine what a meter is, okay. Keep in mind that a nanometer is one billion times smaller than a meter. La, la luz tiene, uh, what wavelength does that correspond to? That should be like... For example, you can catch a photon. A photon is a particle of light that travels at the speed of light. Millions of miles per second. And if we catch light at that speed, it could be, it could be that we could use the light, for example, um, to create optic computers that function with light instead of electricity. 
And since light is so fast, it could be that computers of the future um, could be here in less than 50 years. We think that in the next 10 years, we're going to, to be able to invent something like this um, that could function with light and work a lot faster. A thousand times faster than the computers we have now. A lot of low income kids think that um, going to a university like Harvard, like MIT, like Stanford, require a lot of economic resources. But the truth is that a lot of these universities, the best universities in the United States offer um, a lot of financial support for students that have no resources. A lot of immigrant students that get accepted to universities don't pay anything. They don't pay anything. In reality, the universities offer help and um, they offer them money to attend the universities. Um, economic restraints should not hinder uh, their desire to apply and to uh, reach and climb up that academic ladder. The most interesting thing is that for those four or five years studying in a university, um, it'll require a lot of effort, but the reward after is so exponential. Uh, basically, after graduating from a university, um, majoring in engineering, mathematics, or science, they have a lot of opportunities to work. Um, intellectual satisfaction, social satisfaction, that seems to me an investment that is very uh, indispensable. I decided to work in the academic world in the university, but I have a lot of friendships with Hispanics as well that graduated with me that are now working for Dropbox, Facebook, um, Google. They started the same place I started. From, from a public school, from, from immigrant families that didn't speak English. That means it can be done. The only thing that has to be done is to focus on the present and not to think five years ahead, but what you'll be doing in 10 years. Those were some encouraging words from Alejandro. There is a lot of help to go to some of the best universities in the United States. There are scholarships and financial aid, especially for those whose families don't have the income to pay for their children's education. The secret is to start the journey, knowing that at the end, the reward will be awesome. When we come back, applying math equations to biological processes is this professor's passion. It is the basis of all sciences and one of the greatest treasures of human knowledge. Many students may be afraid, but others master it and transform it into a powerful tool. You've probably guessed that I'm talking about math. Math is a very important tool in many careers, and in this segment, we're going to meet a mathematician who applies math to our everyday lives to understand biological processes or the effects of a new medicine in our bodies. Let's hear what he has to say. So it's really trying to understand the biomedical significance. Oh, my full name is Stephen Allen Workus. I'm an associate professor of mathematics at Arizona State University at the West Campus. So the kind of work I'm doing right now of, in terms of research, so it's basically when people are trying to uh, take a drug, so for example, let's say Tylenol or something like that, there's a process by which the body uh, disperses it. So it's applying math to medicine with the hopes of ultimately saving lives and that can be in the long run but also in the short run just in terms of let's say clinical trials and trying to guide where there might be problems uh, or things to hone in on in terms of uh, having the medicine have its most beneficial effect. From my point of view math is basically it can be applied to every field. Uh, in the recent maybe few decades, biology has really taken off in terms of the application. This is a model for a degenerative disease called retinitis pigmentosa, in which the rods, which are responsible for night vision and peripheral vision, are mute, have a mutation, and they start to de degenerate. And so we're able to basically change in the model some of these parameters, uh, for example, talking about the energy uptake or the energy consumption of the rods and the cones to see what affects most. Um, the results. Doctors will benefit in the sense that they will be able to better uh, target certain therapies and know exa exactly which uh, processes or mechanisms play a bigger role. I've always enjoyed math and it was having encouraging teachers in high school that just encouraged me to continue uh, 
studying math, and I was fortunate to have scholarships in college, uh, so essentially I was paid to go study math. In terms of how difficult it is to get into math for a child, again, it, it, they really just need to have an interest uh, in it and have mentors and role models, whether it be parent or teacher, foster this and not just convince them that it's, uh, you have to memorize these things, you have to know how to apply these formulas. So that is a little part of it, but the bigger part is seeing the bigger picture and seeing the world of places where the mathematics actually applies. So if a child is going to go into math, one of the things the parents, for example, need to focus on is trying to keep it fun. But for example, playing the card game of memory, where they're spatially trying to connect a certain picture with a place. Um, those kinds of games. So basically, mathematics is, is in everything. Um, so whether we're, we're talking about the computers, uh, the technologies that go into there, uh, everything is getting smaller and smaller, which means uh, you know, you need to have things run more efficiently, the algorithms behind something, uh, all of that is, is rooted in mathematics. And when it comes down to it, uh, everything computer technology-wise that's digital. Um, so mathematics, it's really teaching you to think in an analytical way. And in that sense, it's applied everywhere. Math can be applied in almost anything in our lives. Through the use of math, we can improve our environment, analyze the effects of some political decisions, or the changes of different laws on our society. Math can be used in medicine and even in artistic disciplines. The field of math is limitless, and a mathematician can have a wonderful and very fulfilling career. Don't forget to visit our website for more information about STEM careers, universities, and other aids. When we return, we will invite you to Cafe College, an ideal place for students who want to know everything about STEM careers. How can we decide on a major or which college to go to? How can we find help to find the career that suits our talents? We can start by trusting our own instincts or by talking to friends or even to a counselor at school. Well, in San Antonio, Texas, there is a place called Cafe College where students can go for help. Here they find counselors to talk to, they can research scholarships, financial aid, or find help to fill out college applications. Let's see how Cafe College works and the information they have for us. Cafe College is a resource center here in San Antonio, servicing the San Antonio community. And we assist students with their college applications, financial aid applications, career information, and looking for scholarships. I am a college advisor and I assist students and their families with their applications. In the city of San Antonio and like many places around the country, there's a demand for employees to go into the STEM professions, especially for uh, Latino and African American students because there's a lot of underrepresentation. So there are a lot of scholarship opportunities to pursue these careers in the, in the engineering, the science, technology, engineering, and math professions. Students sometimes get kind of impatient or, or frustrated with the application process and it's very important that they continue to complete their steps and, and try to be as patient as possible because it is a difficult process but ultimately it's an investment. The reason why I'm here is because um, I uh, graduated from Judson High School two years ago and uh, I decided that as soon as I got out of high school, I would go and uh, get a job. And uh, I thought it was easy and I prefer to come back to school than to be outside in the sun, be working, because I used to be a construction worker. I want to study uh, pathology. I think it's an interesting field. I've always been interested as a child to become a doctor. I. Um, uh, what I like about uh, pathology is that you get to study the, if you have a virus, an illness, cancer. I came here today to find a, like FAFSA, grants, 
uh, anything like that that can help me out with like applications. I mean, anything, scholarships, anything like that that can uh, help me pay for my school. I know that it's going to be difficult studying and going to work, but um, I know that if you keep on going and you give everything you got, you can accomplish it. Student portal where you okay. check your email, you check your financial aid status, everything is done through this. My mom, she was very happy when she found out that I was going back to college. She told me, uh, don't worry, if everything that I can in my power, I'll help you. The parents' role is extremely important and it's uh, critical that parents uh, are made aware and ask questions if they are concerned about maybe how an, an application process works. From even beginning at the elementary school level, it's very important to show children uh, just to give them the exposure of the environment of what college is like. Pack your lunch and have a, a nice picnic together there at the college so you can show your children what college is about and give them, kind of plant that, that seed, that idea in their mind that that's where they're going to go after high school. I already put it in my mind that it doesn't matter what I have to go through, I'll make sure that I graduate because I don't want to go back and do what I was doing before. I want to make sure that I graduate and make a better life for myself. The government has invested millions of dollars trying to help students go to college. Cafe College is one of those places that helps students succeed. There are other places around the country like local libraries where students can also find assistance with information to go to college. The important thing is to start the process, be positive, and look for help when you need it. Do not forget to visit our website to find a lot of information, how to get into a university, get financial aid, or choose a STEM career. We've come to the end of our show today. We hope to see you next time on Generation STEM.